deconstructing the past to help you make sense of today. Time for another award-winning episode of Pre-Nicene Perspective. I thought it would be a good idea to kind of turn back to our core mission, which is discussing the very first Bible. And for new listeners, it's important to understand that in the beginning, there was only one Bible, the very first Christian Bible, compiled in 144 AD by Marcion of Sinope. And it was considered the gold standard of Christian theology for hundreds of years. That is, until 325 AD, when it was ripped apart, Judaized, and vandalized at the Council of Nicaea. And that's a story that we've covered in depth in earlier podcasts. Now, it's also important to understand that sola scriptura was the driving force behind the belief system and faith of these first Christians. They were strict adherents to what was written in that first original Bible. They weren't Gnostics. There was no hidden secret knowledge stored in a smoky back room. It, it wasn't a Dan Brown novel. What they believed then is exactly as you can read it now in the very first Bible. And it didn't contain a Hebrew Bible or, as you know it, an Old Testament. And I'll put a link in the show notes so you can get it for free. Or you can grab a paperback version at Amazon. Just type in uh, four words, the very first Bible. And it should be the first thing that you see. It should just pop right up. Now, it doesn't matter which version you get. What matters is that you have a copy, especially for this show, because we're going to be going really deep in the weeds this time, and you're going to need a copy to follow along with us. Uh, it's okay. We'll just stop the show, and we'll all wait for you to get a copy. Today, we're going to deconstruct a very important verse, one that we believe the Judaizers spent years uh, carefully editing for exact phraseology and meaning. Uh, this was no couple hours spent hanging around in the cutting room floor. The best theological minds spent years carefully crafting and weaving these perversions of the epistles uh, and the gospel of the Lord to make them fit just so into their alien narrative. Now, the verse that we're going to contrast and compare is Galatians 4.4. 4. Go ahead and grab the original and the edited version from the modern Bible. Now, the first thing that we're going to need is some perspective and background so that we know what it is that we're looking at and why there's a problem. Actually, multiple problems. Problems that go beyond just editing and redactions, as you'll soon see. Now, for that perspective, we simply turn to the very first sentence in the very first paragraph of the Gospel of the Lord. It tells us not only exactly when, but exactly how Jesus first arrived among us. Oh, and by the way, there's only one Gospel in the first Christian Bible. The modern Bible has four different Gospels added to it in 382 AD, so I guess you'll just have to flip a coin and pick one. But we're using the real one, and it begins in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Jesus descended into Capernaum, a city in Galilee. Now, think about that carefully. He didn't walk, he didn't run, he didn't drive, he didn't ride or crawl, or even travel to. He descended into, as in from above. Did he rappel down into Capernaum? No. He descended into Capernaum, from above. And that above is heaven. In other words, he entered earth the same way that he left it. Now, even in the modern Bible, they say he ascended into heaven, the resurrection. All Bibles describe the ascension and resurrection. That's how he left. And how he entered was by descending. Now, the Apostle Paul helps us better understand ascending and descending. And he takes care in explaining it to the first Christians. For us, it's in Laodiceans, chapter 4, verses 7 through 13. The modern Bible, though, renamed it Ephesians, but it doesn't matter. It's the same chapter number and verses, and interestingly enough, they didn't edit any of it, which makes our job here today a little bit easier. Now, let's see what Paul says about Jesus ascending and, just importantly, descending. Quote, unquote, Wherefore the saying, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now this, he ascended. What is it but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some to be apostles, 
and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, unquote. Now, not to put too fine a point on things, but this negates the birth narrative and miraculous conception story written by someone we think was called Luke. Luke wrote this story as part of a larger letter, now referred to as a gospel, to someone named Theophilus. Luke said he was writing this story after reading other gospels and wanted to make sure that this Theophilus person, the recipient of this letter, probably a Roman official, received his account of things. Luke uses the title of Most Excellent Theophilus. So again, probably some kind of Roman official. Now, it's all in the first chapter of Luke in the modern Bible, so you don't have to take my word for any of this. He wrote his letter or gospel after many others had already been written, but his is the only one that came up with this entertaining birth narrative. We really don't know much about Luke, except that he may have been a physician and a traveling companion of the Apostle Paul. As for Theophilus, again, nobody knows. We only go this far into it because Paul mentions a person named Luke twice in his epistles as having that name and role. Now, was it the same Luke? Was it someone writing from the perspective of Luke? We don't know. Nor does any church official or theologian that you'd care to ask. Go ahead and ask him. We'll wait. Now, what we do know is that Luke never met Jesus. Did you know that? The author of both Luke and Acts never met Jesus. Luke didn't even claim to have gotten a revelation or had some kind of divinely inspired vision. No, he came up with Luke and Acts through, at most, second and third hand stories. How do we know? He tells us exactly that. Quote unquote, with this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus. Unquote. Again, don't take my word for it. It's all in black and white in the modern Bible. But somehow this Luke person knew the intimate details not only of Jesus' birth, including his circumcision, but also the secret details of Mary's life years before Jesus was born. Now, we've already gotten pretty far off the beaten track, and believe me, it only gets worse from here. Just suffice it to say that Luke is just a Judaized version of the real gospel, the gospel preached by Paul that we know is the gospel of the Lord. And not a word, not a jot or tittle of this Judaized nonsense from somebody named Luke is in it. This is a fictionalized story designed to weave Mosaic laws into the Jesus backstory. Look how they hammer home the laws again and again. The same laws that Jesus freed us from. The same laws that Paul fought tooth and nail against. As he says in Galatians 2.16, For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died for nothing. That seems pretty clear. And by the way, every single law that uh, Luke is raving about here was thrown out at the Council of Jerusalem in 48 AD. That's right, every jot and tittle of it. All 613 of these Hebrew laws were tossed in the trash can by the very apostles who actually met Jesus, people unlike this mysterious Luke person. And if you're interested in any of these 613 Hebrew laws and how they were thrown into a theological dumpster, I'll add a link in the show notes for that episode. Now, you're probably thinking, gee, Darren, I thought this was about Galatians 4.4. Why are we in this rabbit hole? Well, bear with me here a little bit, because there's just a couple more missing pieces that I want to mention before we finish. And I use the word missing for a specific reason. The two Judaized characters dreamed up by this Luke person are nowhere to be found in the Gospel of the Lord or in any of the epistles of Paul. The only mention of Mary's are Mary of Magdalene and Mary, the mother of the Apostle James. And the only Joseph is Joseph of Arimathea, mentioned once after Christ's crucifixion. So, to sum up, millions of the first Christians were completely unaware of this Hebrew virgin birth story because it wasn't dreamed up and written down until much later. They only knew then, as we know now, that Jesus arrived on earth when he descended into Capernaum. Now, with this in mind, let us now read Galatians 4.4 as we find it in situ in the first Christian Bible, and it reads as follows. When we were infants, we were held under the elements of the cosmos. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son to ransom them that were under the law, that we might receive sonship. 
Okay, now let's read the modern Bible, the Judaized version as we see it today. And it reads as follows. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, and that we might receive the adoption as sons. And there it is, born of a woman, born under the law. Now, again, the original verse. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son to ransom them that were under the law, that we might receive sonship. So where did this other one come from? Born of a woman, born under the law. It's not there. Brilliant. And that's how they did it. You now have a demonstrable, concrete example of not only a bare naked, neon light edit, but an edit used to support the narrative of a false gospel. It's a simple tool for the Judaizer to use as he supports one lie with the invocation of another. So, they have their tools and we have ours. Our tool, or key, is the first Bible of 144 AD. And with it, we can compare the original gospel and scriptures to the modern Bible and spot these edits instantly. It's like a cryptographic key in a way. And I'll have a link in the show notes so you can download a free copy as an ebook, or you can go to Amazon, grab the paperback there, just type in the four words, the very first Bible, or go to the website and read the entire Bible online at theveryfirstbible.org. This has been Darren Kalama with the Right Bible Podcast, and we'll see you next time. First Bible Network, the authority in pre-Nicene news, history, and analysis.